Hello, guys. I am Shane Davis, 20-year comic book veteran. We're here today to talk about the Marvel visual effects and the problems that are coming and uh, possibly unionizing. But before we do, I do want to remind you guys we have Extend the Level Up. This is our newest campaign from Nine Lives Comics. This is our creator-owned comic book, um, Extend Level Up. Uh, a couple of gamers go into a virtual reality game, and when they log out, they bring the game into the real world with them. If you guys will, please go over there. Check that out. Now, on to the news. We got Marvel VFX workers fight to change companies' live-at-work culture. Now, this is a thing where people are working 16-hour days, no breaks, all of this stuff. Were you guys to be entertained by superheroes? Well, saying superheroes is kind of narrow because I think this is a company-wide problem all across the Disney family. So, we have heard all the horror stories from not recently, but from years ago even. Talking about how, for example here, Mark Patch is a visual effects coordinator on Wonder Vision. He works 16 hour shift, skipping break periods and spending his lunchtime scanning set designs and costumes while the crew enjoying their midday meals. So mm. that's pretty much that means that the visual guy was um, working the entire time, 16 hour shift. You got to commute and go back to home. You got to still do housework, you got to sleep. It's like, wow, all right. I'm sure that this is not just a one-time thing, but wait too, look. More Wonder Vision visual effects coordinator says he works 18 hour day. So, 16 hour day, 18 hour days, that's what we'll be hearing. And we hear about that too, most recently, right? They were saying that they actually took the visual effects staff off of other Marvel projects to put them on to the Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever movie, which is mm -hmm. why some of the other movies like uh, Quantum Mania, Ant Man, and all that, they actually suffer in terms of visual effects because they had their worker taken away from those projects to put on another project that Disney deems as more important. But that really proves that there's just limited resources, you know, like why do you have to shuffle around the VFX people if you have enough VFX people working around? So the proof here is that they don't have enough VFX people working and they're trying to work them to the bone. So how are the VFX workers now at Marvel Disney responding? Well, a super majority of more than 50 Marvel visual effects crew members which refers to 80% of Marvel employees who are on the payroll a week prior to the petition, signed authorization cards stating that they would like the union's representation. And a vote to certify the union is currently set for August 21st with September 11th deadline. So what this means is that they want to be able to unionize and then they want to be able to standardize health benefits, pensions, meal penalties, and overtime compensations. I.e., we want to be given a fair compensation for the kind of work that we've been told to do. We don't want to work 16 hour days anymore without proper overtime pay. Right. And a lot of these jobs are kind of like sometimes like salary jobs. And, and those are some of the worst jobs you can get sometimes depending on because you have no set hour. You might actually lose money depending on the hours at work. Even if they were being paid by the hour, part of the problem is, is, you know, Marvel had, uh, or at least Disney, Marvel, whatever you want to call it, had so many superhero movies per year. And then here comes streaming with multiple episodes, so more special effects are needed. And it's just way too much. Uh, and, and again, you have to look at everything that Disney puts out. This isn't just a Marvel thing, but the Marvel stuff probably has a big lion's share of the workload here. But you, you have all the live action Disney movies that they're trying to do. You, you have the Star Wars stuff, you know, and then you have all the Marvel stuff. So, I mean, the VFX guys are, and, and I get that they're trying to keep a uniform feel over the MCU to some point. They want it to all kind of feel like it's painted by the same brush. But, but ideally, this is an insane requirement. Working in comics for 20 plus years, um, you know, companies try to establish house styles. And as much as they try that, it, you still can't get it across the whole line. Now, what Marvel's trying to do is basically, Disney Marvel anyways, is put out the same amount of content as the American comic book industry. But just like the American comic book industry, they suffer by a glut. There's just too much product and not enough talent. And eventually that's going to weigh the, the line down and eventually burn customers out. Now these guys, do they deserve to uh, decent pay for sixteen hour days? Should they even should they, they even be working sixteen hour days? Dude, you know how they get all these people, right? They tell them, well, maybe we're not paying you as much as you think you will make. Like for example, here, 
a data wrangler is making only 850 a week and he's working 12 to 18 hours a day, seven days a week. So the excuse they give is, well, you're working on a Marvel film. Obviously, that will help your resume going forward. It's like, yeah, is that old scam again? You know, I'll give you exposure. Well, and that's the biggest scam Marvel's had forever is you're working for Marvel. For people who don't know, Marvel has always historically paid less than DC Comics. Uh, as far as character equities, like if the character appears in a video game, movie, or whatever, DC's always paid more. And page rate, the same. Uh, Marvel, uh, even being competitive, they'll come up under $50 a page, $5 a page, whatever it is. And you go, but it's only $5. They'll go, yeah, but we're Marvel Comics. You want to work for us. This has kind of like been historically the way Marvel always treats any type of employee uh, even editorial. So many people in editorial at Marvel Comics just see this as like a stepping stool to another job at a video game company or something. It's like Marvel just looks good on your resume. But when when technically Disney bought out most of all transmedia through Star Wars, Marvel, and all the Disney stuff that they have, where are you going to go from there? You, you're basically, it's not like you're going to roll over to Fox and work on the Fantastic Four. Nope, Disney bought that. So you see, like, this isn't much of a stepping stool for anybody working on the Marvel visual effects. Like, where are you going to go from here? You know, this is the top. So it's kind of a... The interesting part about this, I really want to stress in the video, too, is this is a group of people which probably do deserve more benefits than they get. But they're asking for this at probably the worst time. And this is with the uh, Hollywood strike. This is also with um, box office and, and views being down, historically down on shows like Secret Invasion. The, the Like the Flash movie is another good example. Big bomb. Like you guys can't expect to be asking for a lot when superhero stuff is on its downfall. Mm, not to mention how Disney themselves are trying to wrangle out the situation by saying, yeah, we'll just do stuff with AI now, which is how you end up with that really horrible, soulless looking Secret Invasions intro. So they would really be trying to replace whoever they think they can replace it. I mean, most of the interest you see in all your TV and movie nowadays, it is like a lot of it is the VFX people, basically. So they're trying and, to cut them out already. And I, I want to leave this with a secret I'm hearing from an inside source, but Marvel is seeing this as a good opportunity to let the Hollywood strike shut down all productions on all their Marvel stuff. As the views are down, Disney Plus is is down, Disney, I mean, this stuff is just costing a lot of money right now and nobody's taking on to it. So it is possible from my inside source that Marvel w is going to let like this stuff die off and reboot it after the Hollywood strike stuff is over. That might be the best thing for the property, to be honest, because they, they are going into uh, tiers of characters nobody really cares about right now. And uh, just like the American comic book industry, every now and then you do need a reboot. So we'll see what happens with that. Again, if you guys will, please hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notification. Let us know what you think of the video, your thoughts on this. Also, if you guys will, please go check out Extend. The link is right down below. I'll leave you guys with a trailer for this smash hit comic book live right now. Go back your copy today. I dream. I dream of a world carefully crafted, beautifully flawed. This is Accent. In this game of life, there is one thing that determines a victor. A player's ability to grow. A player's ability to evolve. A player's ability to survive. My name is Dog. Choose to play. Choose to upgrade. Choose to level up. Choose to accept.